Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with another modeling video. Today we're doing another honing your airbrush skills. And I've uh, been airbrushing over the past month uh, one mostly whole model for the Gunpla Builders World Cup competition. And um, started painting a dry sea. I was priming it a few days ago and came across some problems. The airbrush was choking a bit. Now I'm going to go find out what it was exactly. We did a full clean out not long ago. And I'm finding a tiny matter lint. Now for a 0 0.30 mil uh, that tiny little uh, crap can do a lot of damage and flow um, or prevent the flow of air and paint. But I don't think that's all of it. I've got the nozzle here being very careful with the tip we're going to remove the last of the lint and it fits very snug so we should be able to f airbrush absolutely freely and remembering when we're putting the nozzle back on only screw on very very lightly as the washer is there to prevent air escaping so just finger tight whatever strength one finger can tighten and that's in flush today by request we're going to mostly talk about uh, thinning paints uh, getting the ratio correct uh, acrylics will be a good start. I'll be using Mr. Hobby, um, Aquarius uh, Hobby Color. Uh, it's very similar to Tamir. It's a resin base. And we're going to use a uh, ratio of two part paint to one part thinner. Normally, I would mix the paint in the actual airbrush but for beginners it is recommended that you do it externally to get the mixture right visually and once you get a bit more uh, confidence you should be able to do it within the airbrush and use the uh, jet technique. Uh, this method does uh, waste a tad of paint but uh, for your benefit I think it works out we're going to be using X20A thinner. Uh, it's just isopropyl alcohol, which you can buy from um, a high percentage, 90 something. You can buy from uh, chemists. It's a, a sanitary uh, alcohol for uh, medical purposes, home medical purposes, or it uses a glass cleaner in hardware industry. So I'm going to use an eyedropper, a glass one, and we're just going to put about six drops and that is somewhere between a third and half of the paint it's very thin paint and it's tempting to not use a lot of thinner but you will want to use uh, a bit we mix it and bung it into the airbrush this experiment, we're going to figure out uh, what is the ideal ratio. I think uh, one part thinner to two part uh, paint or 30% thinner is a good start. And if it's a tad thick, you just add a drop or two of thinner to it, hoping that you're not having other airbrush problems and you're just making the paint far too thin. So make sure it's completely cleaned out, there's no gunk or anything stuck in the needle lint and once you get the um, ideal mixture you're able to spray away at a PSI of around 15 
Alright, uh, please bear with the compression in the background. Now let's draw a line. Bit splattery. Um, doing uh, only pushing the brush down halfway. I think uh, the paint is far too thick. So I'm going to chuck in a couple of more drops and go for a ratio of about um. 50-50. I uh, just did another one. Still splattery. Still too thick at 50-50. So I'm going for about another two jobs. 60. Uh, it's still not 100% uh, right. There might be a problem with the airbrush. So I'm going to pull apart and have a look. Now... I have used 70% thinner. Uh, this is, after all, brand spanking new paint. And uh, it's a metallic. So 70% paint, and I've increased the PSI to 25. Uh, 10 more PSI. And... We are getting absolutely lovely lines. even though it's a tad fat. And we can see the process we have uh, worked through from something that's very thick, very spluttery at a low PSI, increasing it a bit, and eventually finding out that I just only needed to add a tiny bit more thinner at gradients of uh, two drops of uh, thinner. Now, when you're using different paints from gloss to matte, from metallics to normal paints, uh, acrylic, enamel, lacquers, uh, different paints are going to need different uh, ratios. Uh, a good ratio is always 30% uh, uh, thinner, and you can always add more at tiny doses and do a quick line until you're uh, quite happy. Once you get a bit uh, familiar, you eventually figure out how watery it has to be. You can uh, slosh the paint on the inside and see how long it sticks and slides back uh, against the uh, metal. And when you do the bubble technique, how, how uh, watery it is will judge you that it's uh, a fairly good consistency to paint with. I can already uh, judge that at that state. But for people that are a little newer, um, sloshing the paint around in the actual airbrush and watching it uh, drop back is a good indication of how thin it is. So take notes of things like that, how well it moves, how well it bubbles when it's uh, in the airbrush, and that's a very good consistency. It's uh, just slightly ever so thicker than water, and it's what a lot of people refer to as consistency of milk. This is the consistency of milk, and your paint's going to be at different states when you're... Uh, mixing it. Sometimes I pour uh, the remainder of the um, thin paint back in the jar and it becomes slightly thinner and thinner over time to the point where it's not good enough for hand painting anymore. No other jar for airbrushing and uh, hand painting. Other people dislike this uh, technique as it makes their paint uh, go off. I'm more of a conservative uh, modeler. Uh, another important thing is uh, making sure you use the correct thinner in your uh, paint. Now, with an acrylic resin base, uh, Tamir uh, Gunzi, we have uh, talked that um, X20A is the correct thinner for uh, this brand, or isopropic alcohol. Uh, lacquers, enamels are all different. We'll talk about this in a future video. But for the meantime, this is the general fault-finding process that you go through to find out how thin exactly you want your uh, paint. And uh, you'll notice that if you hold if you start spraying constantly, it runs. So if it's running like that and you're holding it still, uh, you're doing it correctly. But once you uh, do that hold still on a flat surface, like so, 
it's not going to look good on your model. So when you're at the ideal thinness for uh, detailing, drawing lines, you need to be constantly moving. You can't have your airbrush still or it's uh, going to pull. So the air first and you do sweeping lines. I might have been slightly too thick still, but drew some lines, which may be a tad hard to see. Uh, not perfect. Uh, for some reason, I'm having trouble getting any finer than uh, this. But uh, got to practice your lines. The fat lines are obviously uh, a tad easy. But closer inspection, we're not having any uh, terrible uh, errors such as uh, splattering or whatever. Don't know if it's... Uh, metallic uh, acrylic or what can sometimes be a tad um tricky to uh airbrush with but uh yeah fair enough effort one last uh, note on spraying uh, metallics if you're only using one airbrush uh, some modelers will recommend using two airbrushes one for metallics one for solid colors flush it out extra extra well because Sometimes some of the shiny pigments may get stuck in the airbrush and when you spray your next coat, uh, if it's a white or a clear, it might have a slight glittery like uh, glint uh, to it. So uh, yeah, some hints to um, thinning down your paints, getting the perfect consistency to something that's um, far too rough. Uh, what some people think when they're getting um, too much uh, splatter is uh, up the uh, PSI which kind of makes the lines a little fatter, harder can, to control but another option is always uh, thinning your paint to a nice uh, consistency. Uh, all in all just a couple of hints on uh, thinning, hope this um, helps out. Uh, again this is not a tutorial, just me exploring my own airbrush and trying to improve my own technique, uh, getting some um, problems of airbrushing out in words and uh, showcasing uh, some of the own problems that I go through myself sometimes and some of the challenges airbrushing can uh, come across. So I hope this uh, video is helpful to you guys and as always catch you guys next time. We'll go back to normal colors and back to doing fine lines. See you guys next time. Hello, me again with a bit of supplementary information for this video. As you may have noticed, this paint was not very uh, conventional and is more so as a hand painting uh, aid. The older acrylics contain very fat, very heavy uh, pigments which can be seen visually in the paint finish. Now this, uh, as we have learnt in the video, requires uh, a lot more uh, thinner. What I've uh, remembered not using this paint for a very long time, the pigments actually bounce around in the nozzle of the uh, airbrush and just create such a really wide and sporadic uh, spray pattern to the reason why we've learned that thinning it and upping the uh, PSI works nicely. For traditional acrylics, the 30% thinner and uh, 15 PSI does work almost guaranteed. So all in all, at least you know if you're jumping on an acrylic uh, bandwagon not to bung 70% uh, thinner straight off the uh, bat. More so of uh, the lesson of exploring your uh, options without massive waste. You might also discover things such as uh, the same brand, uh, Mr. Hobby uh, matte black paint and gloss white paint. Uh, the gloss white paint will take virtually no thinner and will take forever to layer over a model where the black will just take one thin layer and a bit of thinner. Uh, pigment density is different from color to color even though it's the uh, same brand and uh, type which makes uh, pre-thinning your paints and bottling it uh, quite difficult actually and you'll find some pre-thinned paints still need a tad of thinner like Alclad. Hope that information was useful somewhat. Uh, next month we'll do a, another honing your airbrush skills video and later on we'll probably do another thinning round with uh, traditional normal paints and of course other types of paints. Catch you guys later.